The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. All this Monday, the 29th of November, just about to wrap up the month. And we'll be looking at monthly candles in a moment. But you've got the futures after that smash on Friday. And for a lot of people, it must have been a big surprise. You know, not a bad day on Wednesday. Then suddenly, kaboom, uh, waterfall cascade. Uh, Dow's down almost a thousand points today. It's up 213. What I said to subscribers to my opening call that today you you really want to see a bounce that holds all the way into the close into tomorrow probably a, a close at least after two o'clock maybe you want to see at least a plus 250 or more perhaps even a 320 uh gain in the dow and that way you can see at least follow through strength after all some of the the selling on friday was exacerbated by the lack of volume uh, bad news. Uh, at this particular point, we we were expecting some kind of a bad news. I mean, we, we've been shorting away for the last few weeks, looking at the Dow 36,446 all-time high on the 8th of November, hits a low on Friday, I forgot to put it in on this one, of 34,858. And now it's trading the futures at 35,062. Not bad, not from the start at the open last night in the futures, the market started to rally a little bit and I read more and then it rallied very strongly and then it just held steady. I mean, just look at this. This is the 120 minute chart. Now, so this is the 10 minute chart of the E mini right here. And look at this trading band. Uh, it starts off early on with a, with a bounce right here. And that's. At 3 o'clock on Friday, there was a little bit of a bounce, sort of a rectangle sideways move. And then it goes to a peak E, and then all of a sudden starts to slide, goes down to 40, around about 45, uh, 79, 45, 80 um, in the futures and the E mini S&P. And then it is peak A, peak B, and peak C1, C2, C3, where? Right on the 200 period moving average, you can't get above it. That's the clue. If you start to see a trade that becomes a holding pattern above 40, I'm going to make it 46.42 right now. The high so far is 46, hmm, 42.75. Nah, it's no good. I want to see. Yeah, yeah. I want to see 46.46 or higher. And if, if, the S&P futures are at 46, 46 or higher into this afternoon. I think that's going to be a good sign for tomorrow. If it's weak, it says, you know, those signals that we were getting all the way through. Let's go through everything right now. So now we're looking at the Dow. The Dow futures up 204 after making a low in the 34,500s on Friday. And now we're looking at this pattern where the there's a sell mode in the daily there's been a sell mode for quite a while got a, almost a doji candle in, in the weekly chart at a peak d we're just looking at a digestive phase that's been unfolding looking at the s p which was at <laughs> this is amazing all-time highs on the 22nd uh, four sessions ago uh, today's the fifth so it'll be a little more than four sessions at 47.43.83 Plunges down to 45.85 on Friday. The futures now, let me go to the continuous contract just to show you something because I got it in the monthly chart at AB. Uh, the uh, weekly chart is in, at peak E and the daily chart was at a peak D at an all time high in the, in the E mini. And that's 47.40.50 on the 22nd. It landed up yesterday on Friday going to uh, 45. 77.25 and right now it's up 35 at 46.31 if this is able at any point to touch the 914 period moving average at 40 around about 46.59 in the next two days that's good action if it gets repelled there i would not be surprised if the nine starts to close 
underneath the 14-period 40, the 40 moving average for the first time since it broke above back in uh, October the 15th, one and a half months ago. Uh, that's going to be really important. So if it goes negative, all of a sudden you've got every single indicator going negative. So this is a really important phase. Weekly chart, uh, haven't even got a sell signal yet. Uh, it's really is outstanding action. I could I could extend these trend lines here. Uh, Chapman wave inside track repellent zone. Let me do this. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, it just hits it exactly and it gets repelled. That's exactly what this does. And now we're looking at key support. I didn't even bother to put, extend this, but I'll do that now because you've already got, uh, look at this, right there. Grab it. There you are. And that just says this, this week, the 45, 48, 45, 46 level is absolutely important to hold in the weekly chart. All right, got an up channel. In the up channel, trading between the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, going to the propellant zone. Let's see what happens. QQQ. QQQ right now trading at 394.81 of 361. Had a quite a, quite a turnaround on Friday. Um, we are short for subscribers. We've been rotating through all those different shorts. And here we are at the short, um, at the, almost at the high. High was 408.71, the 22nd of um, November. Trades down to 389. I mean, that's a, one of the bigger moves it's had to the downside in a long time since way back in uh, going to the October low. So now what we're looking at is could there be a rally? Could be, there be a rally about 395.80 to 396.30 that holds? That'll be important. If it does it, that's pretty good action. Weekly chart just went to the inside track repellent zone. Monthly chart is still looking very good. We're looking at the IWM, which was the weakest of all. IWM now is uh, up 262 at 226.225. Point forty-seven. It's gone from the 244.46 level almost to the 50 period moving average. It hit 219.64. That's a big move down. Could try to balance here. We're going to be watching that closely. All right, let's get on with the other story. The other story is SMHs. Semiconductor index is at 302. Oh, I should mention, this is the early edition. It is 813 right now. It'll be recorded and replayed at, uh, this will be at 1013. So it'll be re recorded and replayed at 10 o'clock. For my usual target technicians hour, I have an appointment at that time. I just wasn't able to uh, change that. So I decided to do the show at, at 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock and replayed. So these are pre-open numbers. 302.68 in the semiconductor index made an all-time high of 318.82. We've been short since almost the top. And now we were, we're looking at um, holding a, a support line. Uh, closing just under the 14 period moving average. I actually haven't been able to give a sell signal yet in the daily chart, although it looks like it should be. The line is still too strong over the 14 period moving average. Going short, the, the strongest index is a, a bit of a chutzpah, but in the meantime, back at the, oh, that's right, it's a holiday right now. All right, what we're looking at is 302.68 in the semiconductors. Let me just do this real quickly gold. Gold is uh, trading up only six points at 79.4 after being having a good attempt at a rally and hitting the line of 40, hitting everything to fight and closing at the lows on that fourth line. I'll be back in a moment. That's the cap. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Basil Chap here. Early edition of the uh, Tiger Technicians Hour, usually at 10 o'clock tonight, to 8 o'clock. And we're looking at uh, pre markets. Here, gold is down, uh, is up six after a pretty look at this. Chap Wave inside track, propellant zone, it's right on that. It's gone below it three times in the last three sessions. <coughs> Will it have a good rally? Uh, unfortunately, we got sh uh, taken out of our G. I said unfortunately out of our GDX. That's the gold miners. We, we had a nice profit, but uh, I, I was actually trying to stay in it a little longer. We'll see. I think that it, it's in a trading band. It's going to go from one range to another. I don't think it's breaking out. I, I'm not even sure it will break down. Look at the silver uh, contract. Um, the silver contract is up just 11 cents, 23.24. Also, it's taken quite a dive from the high of 25.53, I think it was. Yep, on the 16th peak F in the chat wave. Remember, I spent quite some time talking about this particular pattern. Call it the uh, this is look the double hump camel pattern. It looks like an M in the MACD and the second rally. Uh, rallies, but the, one of the technicals fail. In this case, a stochastic failed, and that goes just to two peaks higher after that peak D, just above the 200 period moving average, and then it goes plunges down below it. I spent a lot of time last week talking about this very pattern. Let me just go back to gold to show you what I was doing. I spoken about this big move to the upside that I was considering. It's more like a peak E and an F. I've seen this pattern so many times where the stochastic only goes for a little while above 80% and then plunges below it. That's what we've got. So it says that in the weekly chart, that blue line, I've been talking about it for a long time, how, how it's resistance. And then when it comes to support, how long it can hold above that support is absolutely key. Let's look at the Bitcoin. We put them together because they trade um, – They've been alternating between the preference of one to the other. Bitcoin is up 3,225.57.710. Sounds like a lot, but look at that smash on Friday. Going from 30, look at this, from 59,910 down to 53,600. Oh, I would say that's a pretty big move. And now we've got an inside bar, a peak D in the weekly chart. I just think that at this particular point, Bitcoin is probably stuck in a range and uh, gold is a little weaker and at some point gold might become a little stronger and then we'll have to see what happens to bitcoin should mention that we are still long from the core position 
from way, way back October of last year, I believe it was, in the 12,400 area. Now we got 57,750. Just got a little bit left after taking nice profits. Let's go to um, dollar. Dollar had a really good run, went to a peak D and uh, has has had now four days underneath that big sh big pullback on friday hits the 14 period moving averages tried to rally 96.21 uh, up 22 cents made a high of 96.95 was it 96.94 let me just type that in there 96.94 was at the 22nd i think so and now what we're looking at is just a digestive high level consolidation for the dollar still looking pretty good uh, we'll see. But that doji candle of last week in the weekly chart says, hey, be careful. Dollar could have a bit of a pullback. That should help gold. Certainly EUR, USD had a big move up on Friday, giving quite a bit back today. I just don't think it's ready. If you're looking at the euro dollar currency pair, hey, well, look at that. Uh, let's see, looking at it 1.127 down just 0 0.004. And what we're looking at is this is a leg F to the downside possible peak F and therefore that whole inside track propellant zone now becomes a resistance zone. So if if the euro is able to spiral, there we go, I'm just trying to draw this in here. If it's able to spiral above the resistance and go to the hundred and so 1.139 level, let's go to the 1.14 and that's going to be a big deal. We'll be watching this very closely. I want to just do high grade copper. High grade, high grade copper. High grade copper is uh, running a little bit, 4.36, but it's stuck in, in, in the rectangle formation. And uh, it's between the 200 period moving average support of 4.20 and the resistances, resistance of 4.50. Now, what am I missing? Of course, I'm missing crude oil. I think crude oil, look at this massive move on Friday because of the fear that the uh, new variant, South African variant, which they now, of course, have to give a new title to because the whole idea was not to name it after countries like Russia or whatever or uh, Japan or anything like that. And, of course, we're not going to mention uh, China. So what we've got now is we've got a variant title, which is fine. But most importantly, what we're looking at is um, the fear was a little bit... Uh, I'd say it's a little bit overdone, but that doesn't mean to say that we couldn't see some kind of weakness continuing a little bit because of the patterns that we're looking at in the general market and with the general economy. So let's just say that the crude oil is bouncing nicely today at 3.47 at 7164 after hitting at 67, hitting the 200 period moving average. Who would have thought when it was at the 50 period moving average up in the 7670s, it could plunge down to the 67s? Well, it did that. Now it's got a bit of a give back and it should have a bounce. And I suspect that crude oil this low might hold just a little bit longer, but there could be a bounce to the 72 and a half, 73 and a half area in crude oil. I, I think there's a good chance that it does that. I think that was rather overbought. Uh, BCLE, BCLI question in the den. BCL, oh, wow. <laughs> that was a big move. Uh, it started off and it failed back in November. From the 280s, it went to the 330s and then zip all the way down to the 2.70s. And all of a sudden, in three days, it's gone from, is that correct? Yeah, from a low of 275 on the 23rd to Friday's 3.85 on the 26th. That's fantastic. So I I would look at this and say, if the there is a continuation of a huge green candle today, not a bounce, it's at 385 Friday's high was, as I say, 383. If it can go to the 387 area and close above the 385 high of Friday, <coughs> excuse me, that would be very good action. Very good action. Um, BCI. Brainstorm Cell Therapeutics. Phew. Wow. Uh, yeah, I wanted to see if it was breaking. 
All right. This is because it closed well on Friday. It closed the high, that big spike high in uh, February, the sorry, September the 15th to 380. It, it spiked higher on Friday. It closed just a little bit lower. That's what I'm saying. And this kind of confirms what I'm looking at. If there can be a close above this, it says, wow, this is very good action. Now, it is biotech, so anything can happen. But it does say on a purely chart basis, the whole 348 to 380. 38 area should be very strong support this week yeah good move good eye and good move i'll be back in a moment we've got our uh let's see this 826 is that 830 news we'll see what happens with mark at 830 uh that's the chap tiger conditions hour i want to do when i get back i'll do it down the big thing big thing is that the front pump has keep point 91 off ah it's the 2899 level. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks, we're back. Basil Chalk for one, uh, Monday, the 29th of November. And pre market, this is now 8, almost 8 30, 8 30 exactly. And we're looking at the futures. Let me show you something very interesting here. And I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving, a nice long weekend, just relaxing and maybe maybe being with friends and family. That would also be very nice, but just a relaxing weekend. Look, we've got, and certainly there are a lot of things to be thankful for. And what we're looking at here is this sideways move. You see, normally I'd be I'd be right there wanting to buy the dip in this particular instance. It's just too soon after making tops 
I uh, could be totally wrong on this particular instance. We've managed over the years to pick uh, nice bottoms and even the, even the tops. Uh, we've managed to get down. We got the top uh, for, to go short. Uh, we're out of that position within 40 points on this very hour or so of the all-time high. But I I looked at this a lot and I thought if if there's a bounce, the type of bounce that we should have had would have been preferably a very weak session today. And if after the week session, at this particular point, preferably two hours later, like 10.30, uh, an hour after the opening, Eastern Time, if we were now at this particular level, I would say that is excellent. But not the gap, not the oversold bounce that we got. It almost it was like an apology. Suddenly there's this big move to the upside. And look at this. Since last night, let's go to the high right there, 9.20 in the evening, uh, that's Eastern time, of 46.42.75. We've been hugging the 200 period moving average, not able to get to it. It just keeps being repelled by it. Um, this, not, this is not very, to me, this, this is not overly bullish at this particular point. If, in fact, uh, this move up went above the 200 period moving average and we were trading at uh, 46 41 at some point then pull back and now we were trading back at the high at 46 41 level i say you know what i think that that's that's showing that there's a lot of buying and now the early buyers are coming in in fact what's happening now you're gonna you've got a fight between the rectangle sideways rectangle formation the lasting from last night let's call it the bottom here at uh, seven o'clock, so an hour after, half an hour after the open on this 10 minute bar. Is that correct? Yep. Uh, what we're looking at is uh, that low has held, but then the high just soon after that in the 42 area, that is the 46, 42 area, has become the thing. Now, any time from this moment on, as we're speaking, if there is another surge towards the 930 time frame and it starts to hold in the 40, 4640s and the e-mini starts to go to 4653 then 4663 i say you know what maybe that was a good buying opportunity last night as the market opened or even this morning as it opens because we're going to go back to the highest i i'm i'm a little concerned that there is an the dark you know i talk about the dark news cloud cover my concern here is that the rotation is seeing, and especially with that big move up in the volatility index, the VIX, to the 2899 level, right there, 2899 on Friday. Um, and now we're pulling back to the 2469. If, in fact, this volatility index starts, not just goes in, but starts to trade in the 22s and then goes to the 21s, that's the sign that said, you know what, on a short term basis, we can actually have more of the oversold bounce. You don't have to go to all time highs and things like the Dow and the IWM, but maybe the S&P has a pretty good rally and the, and the QQQs, NDX 100. But at the same time, if this maintains its 20, 23-ish uh, level, 22 and then bounces back into the 24, that's saying, uh -uh, we're not done yet. So I just wanted to mention that the, now let me just do this one more time. If you're looking at stocks that have been absolutely fantastic, if you're looking at your Amazon, which made an all-time high, 37, uh, oops, just missed an all-time high, double top. Uh, I looked through, through so many charts, these double top charts, I'll go through them maybe if I have a chance in a few minutes. But if you're looking at the high that was made, all-time high, 37.73.08, week of the 16th of July in Amazon, then it drops down to just under 3,200. Then it raises back to just under the all-time high. It goes to 37.62, and then it pulls back quite sharply, especially Friday. And this is Amazon. Amazon should still be pretty much in the lead, not necessarily the leader, but in the leading stocks in this holiday season. Uh, it's just an easy go-to. People got so used to it. They said, it's so easy. I mean, the other day I had one little tiny thing that I ordered. It was here the very next day I, on Sunday. I ordered it Saturday. It was here Sunday. I mean, I didn't even need that kind of rush, but there it is. 
and you have prime so it comes really quickly all right so with that said all i'm saying is let the market tell us um we did not go to add to any long positions we've started a new long position in a different sector we haven't been in for quite some time in fact for a very long time got smashed decimated and it seems to me there's a chance that it could move quite nicely now just on a percentage basis low price stock i don't want to overspend right now i want the subscribers to have a cash kitty ready for any sudden like the friday move but i want to i, I want it to be sustained to the downside, not just a single move down. Um, otherwise, you're buying really overpriced stocks that are just pulling back modestly. And they can go back to overpriced, but I prefer to get overpriced stocks that have been uh, really leaders sharply down. And then I then I think those are bargains. So in the meantime, back in the range, we're looking at Amazon. Let's look at Apple. Now my thinking here is that Apple yet yeah, had a big pullback. I I really have to, I can't call this anything else but a peak B. Very unusual to make a, an all time high at a peak B and then break down. So it could be something else. But right now Apple is up at 159.39 pre market at 258 up 258. It had an all time high of 165.70. On the 22nd, so this is not a big deal. It is pulling back, but uh, Apple. I wouldn't be surprised if Apple actually does quite nicely. After all, in this environment, it's just with chip shortage and everything like this. It's just easy to get one of the Apple products, and I think that that's where they're going to be. It's on the list for everybody. Well, I do not have. I, my wife has Apple. I do not. Um, but it's just easy to do. So I think it's in the running here to hold well. Uh, and if you're looking at uh, Netflix, I was a little surprised, I must say. Netflix, uh, off the all-time high of 700.99, made uh, just about a, just over a week ago, uh, trading right now at 665.64. I would have thought they would have continued up near the highs after this is a good time for them. But maybe people are starting to go, get out a little bit. I'm not sure. But um, it's not bad. I mean, it's, it's just a little off the 35 points. not a big deal off the all-time high. And, and let me just show you something else that I was looking at. The IYT, the, the, this is the, I didn't put that in. Let me put it in. This is the iShares Dow Jones Transportation Average Index Fund. <laughs> A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of letters, no words. 281.45, all-time high, uh, off the all-time high, and made the 5th, November the 5th, back in May of this year, it hit 287.40. So it's made a double top, hasn't gone back to the all-time high. You're going to be watching this very closely, because if you're looking at UPS, United Parcel Service, uh, off the uh, recovery high, just like the uh, the um, the transportation and Federal Express, same thing. Sharp move down. I'll be back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger Den Trading Room only at tfnn.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFN and hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. A prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, well, folks. We're back on an edition for the chat. This is about the, uh, whoops, the Tiger Technician's Hour. Look at this. A 200, 200 period exponential moving average. Just getting close to the resistance right now. Once again, in the rectangle formation. Does it have a sudden pop into the 4640s or does it store right here? Hmm, this is going to be very interesting. Okay. A couple of things, a couple of questions. Uh, uh, Basil, you've managed to time turns. Pretty well. What do you think is happening right now? Uh, now? That's a very good question. I spent a lot of time on that. Do I want to go uh, to the long side uh, this morning if there isn't any big pull, any rally that's extended above the sideways range of overnight? Because it would be a good entry if, in fact, we're going to have a very strong rally. I suspect there's enough, uh, enough kind of, let's call it concern right now to say that the consolidation I've been talking about, the rotational consolidation, we'll see. Let me just go to the continuous contract. Yeah, look, NQ, this is the continuous E-mini NASDAQ 100 contract trading at 16,217 right now, up 167. Um, what we're looking at is 16.767, sorry, 16,767.50 was the uh, all-time high. That was, I think, on the 22nd. So it's pulled back quite sharply down to the 1600 level, and now it's got a very good bounce. But the bounce is so far only halfway into that candle. I suspect it could be a little bit more of a bounce, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if by, say, Wednesday, maybe Thursday, we're doing some kind of testing of the low. Um, that means that I'd be totally wrong if there is a close sharply above the open. Uh, let's not even call it open. Let's go to the high of Friday, which is 16,436. That's not a big deal. It's only 200 something points above from where we are. And we're talking about the best of the best in the market leading. So that's what would happen. Then I have to say, you know what? Maybe that was a great near-term short position, but as a more uh, intermediate-term catch-up with the other, with the down, the IWM Russell 2000 weakness, maybe they're going to have to come back up as the NDX 100 and maybe even the semiconductor index hold very nicely. I, this is what we're looking at. Let's just do this. We want to look at wheat. I was asked about, got to look at wheat and uh, some of the other commodities. So wheat is up three and a quarter at 843, made a peak D daily high at eight. This is a continuous contract at 876 and three quarters, uh, 30 points there. You know, not a big deal. 
We'll see what happens here, but it is a peak D. We've always got to be careful there. If you're looking at soybeans, soybeans have just been stuck in the range, gets repelled at the 200 period moving average, 1261 and a half. It really needs to get to the 1296s sometime either this week or next week without taking out the 1234 key support. Look at corn. Corn is having a, a peak A, a new ABC could go to a D. It's down just two at 589 three quarters. Uh, this is a continuous contract. I suspect that this week is going to have an attempt to get to the 597 area or higher. Stuck in a weekly range, but that range so far is making high highs and higher lows, both in the daily and in the in the weekly. Soybeans, this is part of the DB agricultural ETF, had a huge move from the peak E top in the 20, uh, 2070 area, and then kaboom, goes down to the 1910s, uh, now it's at uh, 1943. That's struggling, but it's holding near the higher range. So we are along the DBA for a long time now, since July of last year, 13.77, hit 20.23, recovery high on uh, Friday. No, Thursday, and then pull back sharply Friday to 9.97, trading now at 20.04, up 7 cents. And my, my thinking has been, yeah, the whole agricultural sector is it's been working. Let's just look at KC. Have I done that for a little while? Yep, KC is the uh, coffee continuous contract. Made a peak E in the daily chart, leg D in the weekly chart, leg D in the monthly. It's held really well. It's doing very nicely. It's up at 245.20, up 225. I suspect I could put in a rectangle formation and say, wouldn't be surprised if it does a kind of a sideways, choppy, high level consolidation. And that says that 249, 250 area is resistance and 238 is support. I was asked about the CC. Um, did I do that? Was that on Friday? Someone said. Yeah, so CC is the uh, continuous cotton contract. This is very poor, making lower lows and lower highs. It's really struggling. Uh, I, I would just say that be, be a little careful. It looked like this was going to be a nice move to the upside and then it completely fails in three sessions. It just took a deep dive. So just be careful there. Let's go to um, LC, which is LC, live cattle or something, not live cattle, continuous con contract. Uh, this is a peak A, B, C, D, brand new A, B, C, D, E. Like e in the uh, daily chart, very strong candles. Uh, it's down 3.30 at 137.90. After hitting 141.45, that is the um, cattle contract. Weekly chart is strong. Yeah, this is doing very nicely. Here again, I can just put this in and say, you know what? Could have a bit of a digestive phase, uh, fill in the gap a little bit, but so far it's done very well. A couple of questions came in. Uh, wood, this is the wood that we're looking at for subscribers. My opening call, ISIS Global and Timber Forestry ETF. I'm suggesting there's a bit of a rest period between high grade copper, international, and uh, wood, timber, and forestry, the global ETF. And that's just saying there's a period of rest. I looked at the HGX for subscribers over the weekend to show that that peak F in the daily chart of the Philadelphia housing sector index. That's pulled back, as you do expect, in the cup formation. Goes back just under the lip on the left side. It's acted very well. It's at 493.13. I wouldn't be surprised it has a bit of a rest over here. Oh, I didn't do TLT. Of course, TLT, we had a spectacular move on Friday. Of course, there's money that didn't migrate. It fled stocks and went into bonds. Now that it's going back a little bit, down $1.72 at 148.81. The TLT stuck in a range. Same as the TNX, TNX dot X. Look at this. There it is. That is, it went to a, a gray peak C underneath the previous peak D of 16.91, 1 1.691% on the 10 year TNX. And today is trading at 15.45, up 63. It's stuck in a range. In fact, I'm going to put this in as a rectangle right here. And I'm just going to suggest, I think for the moment, just for the moment, we're looking at. Yields stuck in a range, but you can see from the XLF, which is the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, leg D to the downside broke uh, a down channel support level, and it's trading at 39.27 or 50 cents pre-market because this is now at uh, 8.50 in the morning. Oops, lowercase on the downside. Uh, it's trading after making a low in the 38s. 
40.86 on the XLF was the high in October the 26th, pulling back because, and I don't know, I'm calling this a, a C in the weekly chart. That'll be unusual if it plunges. So we're gonna, this is going to be really interesting. All week we're going to be watching to see, does, do we see yields rally again like they did Friday as, no, do they slide as they did Friday as bonds rally and that slide weakens the financial business they find out this But So once they put the job out, we have to go get this in. I'll be back in a moment. And yes. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, hey folks, we're back. And now, now this is a good rally. Now the Dow is at 347. It was only up 247. In fact, it was down to 170, up 174. This is good action. They will be buying probably in the early how it holds all the way through and into tomorrow is going to be absolutely imperative to monitor. A question I had, a couple of, so thank you very much to those of you at Tiger TV. Uh, yes, I uh, had, a, had a really nice uh, weekend, family and all that. So a question came in, Hal Burton, I, let's see, the question is, um, uh, Please, wanting to add to Halliburton, Zip wants to know. You know, I, I'm going to suggest right here, two, two, uh, 2185 was the close on Friday. It's trading up 82 cents at 2247. I would add at this particular point. I think there's going to be a bounce. And if there's a general market bounce, I suspect this whole sector 
is going to do well. That's why I said to subscribers, we've got a very low price in the same area oil. Uh, this is oil service, I believe. Uh, ours, I think, more drilling. Uh, but I think that there could be a bounce. So we've taken a chance. We're in that. I don't know how it's doing right now, but we did manage to get it pre-open. And we're doing the same thing. So I would say add. I wouldn't get carried away. I'd like to see how it uh, it's uh, 21 right on the 200 period moving average. If it can close in the 2280 area or high in the next two days and then actually have another bounce in the 23s, I think you've, you've got yourself a really nice trading position. That's all I can say right now. Halliburton trading at HAL um, 2247 uh, up 0.82. And I, as I say, I, we're doing the same thing. So, uh, but not that particular stock with that area. Okay, that's it. So let me just do this for, for now. The volatility index is trading down at 24.27, down 4.34 after almost hitting 29 on Friday. That was a, a huge move to the upside. It's going to give some of that back, and it might be giving quite a bit back. In fact, you can see the market hold sideways, could even pull back, while the VIX index now so overbought takes a beat there. But keep watching this closely because if the VIX actually goes down from the 24s to the 23s and the market's holding what you want to see off 132 o'clock this afternoon, the Dow holding at least uh, 320 or higher, and the SP, which is trading the futures trading right now, uh, up 48, holding the top 40. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Stay tuned. You've got Tommy O'Brien coming up right now. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful,